Colleen Carney now has her own interior design business, but the way she got to that was far from predictable. It seems she spent a whole bunch of years working in high finance before the creative bug started nagging at her. Back when she was a teenager in upstate New York, she used to decorate the room she shared with her sister, making elaborate floor plans. I thought it was just for fun mm -hmm. and being, you know, you go to high school, at least where I went, you meet with a guidance counselor and they say, what would you like to do? And I compartmentalized that part of my life where I guess I thought it was just this creative outlet and it was fun and it was something that came naturally to me and I never thought oh that's what I want to do as a career and I loved fashion as well I loved decorating and I loved fashion but I like I said I compartmentalized those mm -hmm. and thought well that's just a hobby you can't that's not a real job in middle school for something called the tree committee we went to the UN and I remember getting off the bus and seeing these women that were just glamorous and stylish and they had great hair and you know great shoes with leopard print on them and I just thought this is the place for me. I applied um, to Fordham University and I was going to study math. And then I had looked into the School of Business because I had been doing a work study job there and I became very friendly with the, the women that worked in the office and they said what do you think about switching to finance because you like math and I thought you know that's a perfect fit and I loved business and I always had this dream of having my own business at some point and you know being entrepreneurial in that way and so I switched over to the business school and wound up getting a degree in finance. I always wanted to be very successful and have a great career and you know have that fabulous apartment in New York City and make money and um, you know have a prestigious job so I thought well Wall Street I actually got um, a very plum job with Goldman Sachs and their uh, analyst program well I was at Goldman Sachs for almost 11 years mm -hmm. so my it was a very long time period and yes there were times when you know we'd work till we worked for maybe 30 days straight without a day off to meet a deadline you know we'd stay all night we'd leave at five o'clock in the morning when the coffee lady was getting in we were going home to sleep a few hours to come back at 11. you know i had achieved everything on paper and i had this job that i loved but after about four or five years i thought do i want to stay here you know for the rest of my working life and i just had this breakdown and i said no i don't i i actually want to change completely change careers and I remember being at Goldman and feeling very alone and confused because I wanted to make this career change and I didn't know if I could do it. I wasn't at, in the position where I could just walk out the door. You know, I had student loans to repay. Obviously, New York City is not a cheap place to live. I had my finances to think about. Um, and so I just really had to give that a lot of thought of what I could realistically do. I was going into a field that paid probably about a quarter or less of what I was making um, and I just had to come up with a very realistic plan so I enrolled in design school part-time and stayed working and I did the numbers I thought you know what could I realistically what's a, an average salary for a designer and you know could I live in my own apartment and what neighborhood would that be in so all these factors I just had to put on paper and say you know okay maybe I can leave in five years but I can't leave today and another thing was that my company was paying my tuition while I was working there so that was a huge factor um, they were doing a tuition reimbursement program mm -hmm. so I was, they were actually paying for my design school. So it, that was a huge factor because I was still able to keep my job, keep working, get a paycheck and have my school paid for. So, so they were paying you to leave? They were, but I stayed for five years. So yes. in a way they were smart. Yes. There's, there's this designer um, in New York City that is pretty famous and I always really admired her. And I had this fantasy of working for her one day and I thought, you know, when I was itching to leave and I thought, you know, maybe this, this is the year I really have to get out of here, I really have to get my design career started, I said, you know what, I'm just going to call her. And I called her um, with, a, you know, probably a very shaky voice and sweaty palms and I got her assistant and she was absolutely lovely. I 
went in and I met with the business manager and um, she said if, if you'd like to come work for us and be an unpaid intern, we'd love to have you. So that was kind of the, the moment that I knew I was going to leave. This was um, the real world training, you would say. And what did you learn about the real world? Um, <laughs> it's funny, when you have a fantasy of something, the reality is uh, never as shiny and pretty, obviously, so I learned that. Um, but yes, I mean, the mechanics, I think you have this idea, you know, of a glamorous job as a designer, and a lot of it is not glamorous, a lot of it is execution and the business of it, and you know. And then you didn't get paid for a year. I didn't get paid for a year. And then I was hired full time. Ah. Yes. When 2008 hit, things changed. And actually, there were layoffs at the firm, and I was one of the people that was laid off. But I was okay with it because my plan at this firm was to start my own business. So it was time. Um, and I basically moved back in with family because I, you know, to start your own business and not have a client list yet. You get up in the morning <laughs> and you say, okay, where do we begin? <laughs> you don't go home anymore and say, oh, forget that company or my boss. You know, this is my time, you know, screw them. I'm having a glass of wine. You know, you, it's your company. And when I sit on the couch and have a glass of wine and take a break and eat dinner, I think, oh gosh, well, I should go back to work after this and do more things. So it's hard. Sometimes you just don't know when, when to stop. How's the financial plan working out? Financial plan is good, um, but you know it's it's difficult. You know you really you kind of have to hustle. You have to get out there. You have to. Um, it's different when you're not getting a paycheck that's guaranteed every week. Um, you know you could show up at work, Google all day, and you know go to the water cooler and still get paid. But it's different when you have your own business. Now, did I think I would move back in with family to start my own business and, you know, not have very much money? No, I didn't, but I was going to do whatever it took to make it happen. And Do you have any doubts? No, none at all. No doubts? Nope. You know, if you believe you're going to be wealthy, you'll attract wealth. So you just have to keep that in mind. Um, so that's something that I really focus on. So. Is that what they taught you at Goldman Sachs? Nope. <laughs> it's what Deepak Chopra taught me. <laughs> <laughs>